All right, we are leaving the Cabela's outpost in um, Kalispell. Unfortunately, I, we can't stay here. And I'm not going to spend any money here. Um, the town has been ruined. City ordinance. No RV camping anywhere. No RV parking. Um, they do not want your money. So, I didn't want to just keep driving today and, you know, risk finding a place. So, I actually called the KOA in Whitefish. Um, where it's more RV friendly. And we're going to stay at the KOA for 70 no, yeah, $70 a night, which isn't bad. For, you know, this tourist area. But, um, so it was just this year, I think, they passed the city ordinance. No RV parking. So, Walmart used to be able to park here, not anymore. Um, yeah, I don't get it. I just don't get it. I mean, that's fine if, um, if you can get a camping spot, like, but if you can't, what is your alternative? You gotta have an alternative. Homeless people, that's why homeless people are allowed to, you know, stay. Well, travelers are the same way. We don't have a home on the road. So if we can't get a campground, we don't have a place to stay. So what are you gonna do? Go park at the police station? <laughs> <laughs> I should try that sometime. Oh, come on, car. Go, go, go. But I won't spend. I won't spend my money where I, my kind are not wanted. And I will move on. It's just too bad to see um, Kalispell now is ruined. Also. I shouldn't say that. There's other cities around here, but don't waste your time going to Kalispell is all I'm saying. Stay 10 miles north near Columbia Falls and Whitefish and all of the other places. There's nothing in Kalispell to see or do. Yeah, I can't live, I can't live in a city that's so restrictive, you know, with about RVs. So I would not live here. Not because we we dealt with this in San Diego. Like I lived there with an RV. I had to be back at a certain time just to get it back in the storage unit. You know, I couldn't get it until like 6 a.m., 7 a.m. in the morning because the storage unit was closed. It just it's just a hassle. Like I couldn't get it the day before and park on the street. Not allowed in San Diego. You know, so that's why I, that's one of the other reasons I really hate cities that do this it's not just when i'm traveling but it's for owners of rvs too that can't park it at their house like we couldn't park it at our house there in san diego um, it just makes life really hard and then you start driving fast you know maybe you're more dangerous it's um it creates unsafe environment because you're always rushing you know to get your rv somewhere where you could legally park it for the night instead of being on parking on the street for 24 hours. Um, and if you're traveling, it just makes it a safety issue. If you get to an area you're not familiar with, and there's no camping available because it's full, what do you do? Um, I think people need to, I can't say what I think I want people to do, but. Yeah, unfortunately, um, you know, if you come to Montana, um, know where the Forest Service campgrounds are, or the BLM campgrounds. If you need to be in a city area, or want to be in the city area, you need to get reservations. If you're on I-90, it's alright, you can find places, but if you get off of I-90 in Montana, you need to know where you're going for the night because once you get off of I-90 most of the places I'm finding are not RV friendly which is weird um, like I don't understand why Kalispell built it. I don't know there's not I mean, again is it is it the nomadic RV people that live full time or are they abusing it just living in the parking lots you know all these people with their tricked out solar panel RVs or buses are they just staying too long? I can't, I hope.
hopeless. I mean, I don't see why the people going passing through, you know, for one day, why they would care. They're not causing a problem. It had to be people like staying, overstaying their welcome, and it sucks if, if that's the case. And those people aren't necessarily homeless. People that live in their RV full time, that's their home. But you know, I don't. I can't imagine there's actual homeless people here. You know, but maybe there are. I don't know. Just don't know. But I went. You know, I could afford to pay for a a KOA. Wow, Silverbrook Estates looks nice though. You got littler houses, and they're not super close together. Yeah, and that's not in Kalispell either, I don't think. But anyway, I can afford to pay for it. It's just irritating how how they treat RV travelers now in a lot of these places. Like, we're not in a big city, you know, back east. This is wide open spaces. I don't know. I don't know. But I did not feel like driving today after last night not knowing where I'm going to stay. Like, we need a break today. You know, like I said, Zoe threw up earlier. She needs a break. It was a hairball, but still. Um, we're literally one to two days from home. Like, by taking a break today, I could get home tomorrow, you know, because I'll be refreshed if I really wanted to. So, I figured out where I skied. It was Whitefish Ski Resort, and you could see it in front of me. Um, it's not huge, but it, it, it was a fun ski resort. And I think we, we had a ski in, ski out place, you know, we stayed at. And um, definitely come check out Whitefish in Columbia Falls. There's all kinds of tourist stuff by Columbia Falls. Yeah, I, I knew that outpost was, I, you know, wasn't going to allow parking probably because in strip malls like that there's just not a lot of room there's a lot of commotion um i mean the sign you know what the sign said no no big rigs you know it didn't say about rvs but i wonder if they haven't had time to change the sign because this ordinance just passed it sounds like in the last one or two months literally like in a, you know i want to say in beginning of May is what I want to say. Like, literally, they just passed it. So, yeah, that's too bad. I mean, I don't know. And it's not that we're, people are cheap, I don't think. Part of having an RV is it's just fun not paying to stay somewhere. Maybe we're wrong. I don't know. I, I, but again, I'm getting a campsite now. But what do I do if there are none available? You know, what do I do? I, I just don't know. I want to ask all these people, what am I supposed to do? Because people, I mean, truck drivers have the same issue and they complain. Where are they supposed to park? You know, with this new regulations, like they have to stop. And then sometimes there's just no place for them to park. I, I guess if you're a truck driver, you just start sleeping during the day, because it doesn't say anything about, you know, daytime parking, it's overnight parking, and then they drive at night. I guess that's what you do if you're a truck driver, you know, you just flip-flop, drive at night, sleep during the day. Wow, this is, um, this is really pretty here, this area. So this drive is from Kalispell to Whitefish. We're actually only two miles from the campground. And I asked her if there's lots of trees or shade, and she says, yeah, there's lots of trees. So we might be surrounded by pine trees, which would be awesome. I haven't camped in a pine tree um, campground yet on this trip. Sorry if I'm ranting, but I can't. This is, these are the issues you have when you're traveling and don't necessarily have reservations. Um, you're kind of winging it, you know, as you go along. I apologize if it gets old. But, um, I'm just being real, is all. But it's 1.07, so we we'll definitely um, have a lot of time to relax and run 
run the AC if we have to. Hopefully we don't have to. And um, just enjoy the area, you know, in our camp site. This will definitely be the last campground I stay in. Because in, in Washington, I will I'll either get home or stay in a rest area, I think, at this point. I hope. I just can't go through what I did last night today. I can't do it again. So I was like, you know what? I will pay. I will and stop and rest and recharge and relax. I do still like the general area. I just I don't know about Kalispell though. And you know what? I don't think I'd have a problem if they controlled the homeless. That's the other thing that irritates me. Like they I'm limited what I can do now because I'm not homeless. But if I was homeless, I would get away with anything still. So, and that's kind of the bottom line. Like no one has the guts to tackle the homeless problem, but if you're not homeless, they will ticket and fine you and do whatever. Send you to jail if you resist, probably. That's the irritating thing. And that's cowards. That I call them cowards that make these rules. And, but don't, you know, take care of the um, real problem. They're just cowards that are in leadership. Ugh, someone lost their clothes. <laughs> Shorts, socks, and underwear. <laughs> like, wow, this is really neat. Like, this is a KOA campground road. Jeez, this might be one of the best KOAs I've ever stayed in. I mean, it's very isolated, I think. We might be all by ourselves. Wow. I am really glad I called them. There's wild roses here, too. It doesn't even feel like a KOA private drive. I wonder where that goes. <laughs> I hope this is the KOA. <laughs> I mean, she, oh, it is, I think. She wasn't kidding about the trees. There are trees everywhere. This is really neat. I don't even feel like I'm in a commercial campground. I mean, KOA holiday. Wow. There's something called Buffalo Bobs to the right. I have no idea what it is. cell service here though. I don't know about that. I, they better have Wi-Fi. Yeah, I'm going to have to ask about that. I mean, I'll live, I guess, but we'll see how it is when I get farther up. Well, let's go. I'm going to go ask them. I don't need to stream videos.